What's your pleasure, sir? All right. Well, welcome to a new episode of the Cinephiles and Cenobites podcast. My name is Anofri, and with me, my cr- creative life partner, Mox. Dolomite. Yeah, what's up? Dolomite, yeah. Way down deep in the jungle. I don't know what he is. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't, like, I don't know his cat saying. I just know yeah. the name, but I still have yet to watch the the biopic mm. they have on Netflix that you were just telling me was actually pretty splendid. So I might got to give that a look after so Daredevil far. season so three. Far. But yeah, we got another one of uh, Dark Coast. The homies at Dark Coast uh, distribution properties that they're putting out. Uh, what's this one called? Ghost in the Graveyard. In the Graveyard. Written, they even have a creepy lullaby. Yeah. Written and directed by Charlie Comparetto. The film stars Jake Busey. Kelly Berglund and Olivia Larson. And Jason James Richter. Oh, yes, yes. He's in there too. We got Royce Johnson of Daredevil fame. Stop giving my Daredevil. mom cigars, foggy. Cigars. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, Fucking Eldon. Just a small or brief premise. Just a little bit of the rattlesnake. In the small town, Mount Moria, uh, a ghost comes back to haunt teens who witnessed her death as children. She comes into contact with some people. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like the uh, log line for that is worded a bit weird. There's commas maybe uh, that make that kind of confuse the message. Although that log line, I think, is purposefully kind of misdirective because it comes to be not really like it's deeper than just that yes um right like as the story unravels it comes to be this whole thing that you didn't even expect yeah it's a lot of this movie's a lot of things it's got um uh, mystery horror drama Mm -hmm. kind of Mm -hmm. a, a romantic subtext in there there is there is especially early on yeah and i feel like there's some action like at one point of the movie they're like okay grouping up okay uh mother bless me before i go and start my um yeah uh, yeah, offensive yeah against yeah, these yeah. ghosts yeah <laughs> it's like and they got the nun there talking right. back to amanda krueger in yeah. the asylum <laughs> yeah there's kind of a lot of like this, this shit is an amalgam of a lot of stuff um and uh, shout out to Jake Busey, whose performance. Oh, yeah. Performance great. It's great to see him at, in this kind of role, which is a departure from always being like the creepy guy or like the fucking shady guy who might be the killer or, you know, or the, the uh, rapist. The um, the cocky, um, making jokes, fucking side friend character. What was he in? Although um, he was excellent in, um, right from 20 years ago, fucking Starship yeah. Troopers. Oh, yes. Yes, for sure. He was also in Contact, which... He was like really? the um, the he was like the religious um, protester, like uh, oh, like he was against, you know, science, uh, yeah, exploring, yeah. and I think uh, those people, yeah, he he killed Tom Tom Skerritt. So, what were your initial thoughts of the film? Well, for one, I thought it uh, looked wonderful. It looked legit uh, cinematically, and the way that they moved the car- the camera in the opening. Um, a lot of interesting movements of the wide shot as we kind of trail into Mount Moriah. Um, and the score is haunting and beautiful. So I was uh, really optimistic. I was like, oh, wow, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, for you? sure. Yeah, and I always like those intros where it's like a kind of a um, middle of nowhere USA. <laughs> and you got like all these wide, like um, scenic shots. Almost like it's like now um, we got them the car traveling into town, so right, we have an right. idea of this whole like the area, um, and it looks like it's along the coast, maybe. It does yeah, you're right because one of the the ones um, they kind of push over the water right before yeah. we have that bird's eye of the trail into Mount Moriah. We're pushing over the water, um, and then we're finding that coastal trail, and I just I love those shots. I think because I'm still like haunted by Lost Boys. Yes, 
it always feels like that. It's like, right, okay, right. It's a new Something town. Always harkens back to that, right, right. It's like, okay, we're um, moving here. Somewhat of a homecoming ish, yeah. Yes. Um, very homecoming. Because then, yeah, like, I was trying to figure out though, like, because she, it seems like she left at that age, like, because then, um, it starts off with them as kids, right? That was a little confusing uh, because it starts off at kids, then it cuts us back to 10 years later, but she's only been away at wherever she's been at for nine months. So basically that 10 years, she actually was in the town. Yeah. So she was only gone f- away for nine only months. Only gone for like nine months. Yeah. Because hmm. yeah, she so, had like a relationship with Reed. Right. And then it's like, okay, they're not together. Okay. Now they're back right. together. And it's right. this love triangle. And, it's like, huh. She, he kind of has something going with that Zoe girl. Yeah, yeah. But then not. I know, right? Um, it's like, it's a small town. So it's like, okay. Yeah, a little bit of, you know, that kind of uh, old CW kind of teen dynamics, but sure. creepy. Sure, yeah. And there's nothing to do in the town except get high. It's like, okay. Right. Or go play in the graveyard, which is beautiful, by the way. <laughs> Excellent location. Uh, you got to give it up to them. That is such a cinematic location. Like, yeah, there yeah. are graveyards, and then there are graveyards that are meant to be filmed. That is one of them. It's so sprawling, and there's so much depth to it, too, mm. and range. So, I mean, it really reads well on the camera and helps us kind of get into the story. So, that was a good one. For me, though, at a certain point, it started to disengage uh, my interest. And I guess my emotional investment. Sure. At, at what point of the film did that happen? I'm trying, I'm trying to remember. Um, well, I remember the first time that I bothered to look at the running time was at about 31 minutes. So if anytime you're checking your watch, you're usually disengaged. So maybe the first disengagement for me came at uh, just around the end of the first act. Mm. I don't remember exactly what was happening, but I do remember the timestamp being 31 minutes. Cause I felt like there are a couple things in the movie that it, it was a bit confusing. Like there are a couple of deaths in there that happened. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, it kind of threw me off a bit. Like, that that didn't when they need to sum happen. it up at the end yeah well for me yeah uh the ending summation made me remember earlier and be like oh so if that's the good guy then why did this happen <laughs> why did this person yeah like get killed or get done that way which seems supernatural and they were one of the good guys unless i wasn't watching close maybe they were poisoned what looked like they were being killed by supernatural forces was maybe like um, he was poisoned, right? And then started choking up. And it was coincidence that maybe the ghost was trying to warn him. Mm. Like for me, um, without giving too much away. Yeah. Uh, and like the whole, the, the first like death in the film, like that. Oh, you mean in the opening or you mean the first death after we establish that it's 10 years later? Yeah. The, the paper boy. The paper boy. Yeah. Okay. So that, I feel like that was supposed to trigger like, Okay, this happened when you know um, Sally moved back. So moved did she back, do right. it? Like we know who did it, but like that was the only reason. It was just to throw people off within the story. Like, like oh, mm-hmm. right, 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 right. You know, to get the town kind of um. Un- also, too, right? One, why now? And also, do kids often die in the graveyard? If so, like, why are people not like, hey, kids, don't go play in the graveyard? Yeah. Historically. Because like, then that kid had no connection to any other character. Anything. Yeah. I thought, yeah. 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 And that, that right, was just they, to they, bring up, you know, that's news to the town. Like, oh. <laughs> right, right, right. Like, Have you seen the paper? Nope. Yeah. I never hear him again. Yeah. So after, right after that, Jake Fusey, like, yeah. Did you get the paper? I didn't get it yet. That, like, poor kid. Like. Yeah, poor kid. Like, oh no, nope, nothing. He didn't no deserve parents, any of that. You know, like, oh. yeah, nothing to do with it. Um, and maybe his kill was like a harbinger of things to come. Sure. Why yeah. now? Um, uh, and it yeah, probably is to throw you know us off. You know, the audience like, oh shit, okay. Right, right, no. but that's not. It's if it demon. doesn't have an in-story reason, then there's no purpose of doing a red herring. Like, it needs to make sense on all fronts. Yeah. 
So, well, that happens way before the 31 minute mark, but I don't know, maybe that was the, one of the first times where I started getting disengaged. Mm, yeah. Um, cause now we got, um, so childhood friends, Sally and Zoe, they mm-hmm. kind of reconnect and right. Well, childhood, I would say frenemies, maybe. Sure. Sure. And they were mean girl as fuck. Like, Sally shows up to school first day, and, like, there's the whole, like, five, six girls who are all just hating on her, Mm. talking shit, like, you know, oh, here's her again, drama queen seeing ghosts, blah, blah, blah. And then they cut into class, and they're talking about demons and shit, like, whoa. Yeah. So it's like, okay. Well, it seems like it's 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 parochial. It's not a Catholic school. Like, no one had uniforms. Right. But then they have a straight-up nun. In full fucking habit, yeah, giving courses like giving lessons, so that was yeah. weird. Maybe that's how small the town is. I don't know. So. I'm guessing, yeah. Um, I know for big time, um, when the movie revealed what it truly was about, I it just really sucked me out. Um, I think it's an interesting take on the whole uh war between heaven and hell, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, and an interesting uh, perspective, right? To show, I guess, the affected humans. Um, it just didn't work for me. All right? Yeah, I mean, we find out. Yeah, like you think it's. Um, it, it starts off very witchcrafty, mm-hmm. and um, kind of cause and effect. Like one of those movies, a childhood tragedy occurs, and now it's vengeance demon. Right, that's how yeah. the story sets itself up to be, and then it pivots into something um, deeper, like... different, and deeper. Right, which is initially interesting, right? Because if it was just like, you know, we bullied this girl and her ghost is back, but she can't be back. We killed her. Yeah, it's like, oh, we've seen that movie already. So this one, you know, there's a a nice turn away from it's what nice it turn, says it's going to be. But right? it, it but... happens like really late in the movie. It and then, kind of does. And it, it does, kind of does. It does start getting more interesting after that. But then it's like, well, you the know. Reveal. The reveal. Yeah. It, and it's not much time. Like, half, majority of the movie is just these two um, childhood friends trying to reconnect, friends. you know, over and one then, thing. And then. Over one thing, right. You find out, whoa, it goes more than that. It's, you know, it's between, it's heaven and hell kind of stuff. Like, oh. Like there's right. this whole, there's this whole like secret society, and there's two sides to yeah. it too. Yeah, and and I think that's where you know I just did a bit of an eye roll, like oh for real. <laughs> you know, first they're talking about witches, which was cool, but then there's also ghosts, and then they talk about demons. Then later we find out, oh, it's definitely demons, and then it's secret society, and then it's like bloodlines of like, like oh man, for yeah. real. So also okay, go ahead. I was gonna say it's it takes it it's it's a lot to take in. And it is, especially because right, like you said, they spend a lot of time on this one thing between the two characters, like a lot of time, and then boom, they drop a ton of shit in a limited time, right as we're about to go into the climax. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, oh shit! I mean, we had all of this twenty thirty minutes to kind of digest. A lot of this stuff, but then when you drop a reveal that is so multi-layered, we barely have time to absorb it before we're thrown into the ending. Yeah. Plus two, I didn't like what the reveal was too, so I was kind of like, hmm. Mm. Also, um, for me personally, I did not like that we cut away from all of the killings. Oh, okay. Sure. Like they spent a lot of good money to make this movie look good and legit, but I wish they spent money on showing me some of the gore. Oh like, yeah. Oh. Okay. Have you know letting me see people get killed or <laughs> hit? <laughs> yeah. So it's 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 mild in in the goriness, but it's it's enough to I'd say keep you you know interested at least if you're into that yeah, sort of yeah. thing. But, yeah. Um. But again, like I feel like this movie has a, it's it's a lot of things. It is. It and, is. Um, so it's it's kind of up and down. It uh, doesn't. The oh, movie. You know, one thing to its credit, because it's balancing so many stuff, I don't feel it gets lost too bad. Like you're not, like what? You know? Yeah. yeah. 
it's not a movie that I think loses its uh, <laughs> what the fuck it's about. So that's good. <laughs> Um, because it could have easily kind of just deconstructed into what the fuck, but it's not, it holds its thread. Well, um, I just would have liked to see a little bit more of the violence and, <laughs> um, I didn't really like the story. So if you like the story, then I think you can forgive, you know, differences in taste. Like maybe the director or whoever just isn't into, you know, like inferring is enough. Ah, I see. Well, well put. But to me, I mean, yeah, you know, you, you can infer it if the scare holds. This one didn't. Ah. But Jake Busey is a great, and it's great to see him in, like, an actual good guy character. He's like this caring father who's kind of torn. You know, he's had to lie to his daughter in order to protect her, or so he thinks. Yeah. Shout out um, to Jake Busey. Yeah, Jake Busey. <laughs> All right, so Dark Coast will release the film onto digital platforms November mm -hmm. 5th, available on Amazon, Hoopla, Vimeo On Demand, and Fandango. Mm -hmm. You heard it here. Ghost in the Graveyard. Go watch CC. CC. All right, well, that is it for this episode. Uh, thank you for checking it out. Be sure to check out this episode's show notes for links to all our <laughs> social media sites. But other than that, be sure to visit our website, necomedia.com. That's N-E-K-K-O media.com. Dot com. And we'll also be on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, very active on both of those. And you can check those out at cynical underscore mass. That's C-I-N-E-C-A-L underscore M-A-S-S. And feel free to get in touch through email cinephiles and cinebytes at gmail.com any movie recommendations we'd love to check it out any screeners any screeners we'd love to review any potential guests yeah we love having guests on the show too yeah if you're a filmmaker fucking hit us a line and we'll get you on the show a fellow ask you your top six movies and what it's like to be an artist like you oh yes and uh, any fellow cinephiles and cinebites you are welcome <laughs> Yes. Any place that they can hit you up, Mox? At villainous underscore kind. Uh, Instagram and um, fucking Twitter. But don't bother. Um, <laughs> I rarely I rarely check it except when I'm drunk. So oh, okay. I, I'd either send it to Ono or the show. <laughs> yeah, you can check me out on uh, Twitter at this is Ono. That's it. This is O-H-N-O. -O. Same goes for Instagram. Oh, no. Yup. All right. Well, thank you again. Take it away, Annika. This has been a Neko Media podcast broadcasting from the Blood Cave, part of the Slash Tag Pottern family. Family? For myself, Annika Pussyfoot, Mox, and Ono, keep the lights on and check under that bed because there's only one universal truth. No lives matter. That means you. Stay rating, Wokeland. We have candy. Yeah.